In this video, we will discuss continuity equation. Continuity equation is an equation that uh, tells us the rate of, uh, of change in carrier concentrations. So let's consider a one-dimensional semiconductor and then we consider a small slice uh, of width dx located at x. Now, what are the things that can impact the carrier concentration within this small volume? Well, you could first consider an electron flowing in. And the rate of electrons flowing in is represented by this current going to the right. So current flowing out represents electron flow, electron flux coming in. Now, there could be a current coming in and that current coming in represents the electron flux going out. So that flux, it tends to reduce the carrier concentration here. And then of course you could have a generation and recombination within this volume. So the generation could be uh, a generation uh, due to light illumination, light absorption, or there could be some other mechanism that could increase uh, uh, the, the carrier concentration and then there will be recombination and we talked about multiple recombination mechanisms in the past several videos there could be radiative recombination there could be Shockley Hall read process surface recombination and Auger recombination and all of those things uh, will will give you a uh, recombination rate and if there are multiple recombination rate uh, recombination mechanism at work total recombination rate will be the sum of all those recombination rates, of course. So you can set up a rate equation and saying that rate, rate of increase in electron concentration within this volume here is the number of electrons flowing in. That will be this component one, current density here, minus number of electrons flowing out. That will be this guy here. And then the rate at which electrons are generated, that will be generation and the minus the rate at which the electrons are annihilated or recombined. That will be the recombination process four. So this is basically the continuity equation. So um, the rate of change in the electron, uh, dense total number of electrons within that slice is given by the rate of change in the electron concentration times the volume. A here is the cross-sectional area and dx is the width. So that represents the, the volume of this small slice. And then the uh, electron flux is basically the current density here. Um, electron flux is the current density divided by the electronic charge. So this first term here represents the uh, electron flowing out. And then the second term here represents the electron flowing in. Um, and, and this is current density, so the total current is, of course, times the cross-sectional area. And then, of course, there is the generation rate and the recombination rate times the volume. Now, so the, uh, if you cancel out all the cross-sectional area and you come up with a very nice uh, differential equation, and this here is the continuity equation for electron, and you can go through the same process and derive a similar expression for holes. The only difference is the sign here because hole carries the opposite sign um, of charge than, than the electron. Now, we know that the current in general in semiconductor uh, can be, there can be two different types of currents in, in semiconductor in general. And the first type is the drift current and then the second type is the diffusion current so this is the equation for general drift and diffusion equation current equation for uh, for uh, holes and the same thing for electrons now plug that into your continuity equation in the in the slide before then you get these two equations here and this is a full form full explicit form of continuity continuity equation the one at the top here, this guy, is the continuity equation for electron, and here is the continuity equation for holes. If you can solve this, then you have 
the general expression for carrier concentration as a function of position and also as a function of time in both equilibrium and non-equilibrium situation. So again, just quickly recap, there can be multiple recombination and generation mechanism and we talked about band-to-band -band recombination. This could be radiative or non-radiative. Um, and we talked about uh, radiative recombination extensively. Uh, we also talked about trap-assisted recombination, shockley hole read process. Um, and uh, if this process occurs at the surface or an interface, then, then it will be a surface recombination process. And then, of course, we talked about the OJ recombination process. Now, all of these processes could be active simultaneously. If that's the case, the total recombination rate will be the sum of these individual recombination rate. Usually, the most efficient one, the fastest one, uh, would dominate and determine the total recombination rate. Now, for the generation, we talked about light emission. If your incoming light has an energy greater than the band gap, then the valence band electron can absorb the energy and get promoted into the conduction band, generating electron and hole pair. So that's the photo generation process. And, and this is something that we haven't talked about. Uh, it's called the impact ionization process. It is an inverse process of OJ recombination. And we will talk about this in much more detail later when we talk about junction breakdown. So, um, let's consider a simple example of continuity equation and how this can play out in a real problem. So let's consider a p-type silicon, uh, uniformly doped, and the acceptor density is here 10 to the 17th. Um, now you shine a red light, and that is an above band gap light, um, and this light is then generate carriers will, will generate carriers and the generation rate is given here 10 to the 19th per cubic centimeter per second and the minority carrier lifetime is given as 10 microseconds so we don't know exactly what recombination mechanism that are going on band to band uh chocolate read hole process or surface whatever that might be the whole combined effect of those recombinations are, are characterized, that, that can be characterized by this simple lifetime number 10 microsecond. Okay, so now we want to calculate the carrier concentration in this general non-equilibrium situation. How do we do that? By solving continuity equation. So you write down the full continuity equation here. Now, um, let's look at each term. This term here in the left-hand side represents the time derivative. Now, we're shining light steadily. And we are here considering a steady state. And steady state, by definition, has no time dependence. It is time independent. So this left-hand side goes to zero. Now, there is no electric field. Nobody's exerting an electric field voltage here. So anything that contains electric field will go to zero. So this, this go to zero. These two drift current terms go to zero. Now, the doping is uniform and therefore equilibrium carrier concentrations are uniform. Also, the light illumination is done uniformly. So the light is generating carriers uniformly everywhere. So the carrier concentrations are position independent, they're uniform. So this term, the diffusion current term goes to zero as well. Well then, you're only left with these two. So your continuity equation in this simple case says that generation rate should be equal to recombination rate. Now the recombination rate here can be expressed by the excess carrier concentration divided by the excess carrier lifetime. This we have shown multiple times for different mechanisms in the previous, the, the previous few videos. So the equation, the continuity equation gets reduced to this equation here. Generation rate is given here, 10 to the 19th per cubic centimeter per second. Lifetime, 
given as 10 microsecond. Therefore, we can calculate for this excess carrier concentration, which is simply given by the product of the generation rate and the minority carrier lifetime, and that turns out to be 10 to the 14th per cubic centimeters. Now, you can do the same for holes, and you will get the same result, 10 to the 14th, because the carriers are generated as pairs, electron and hole pair. Now let's check the, uh, uh, compare that with the equilibrium carrier concentration. P-type silicon with a doping density of 10 to the 17th per cubic centimeters. Your doping density is much greater than the intrinsic carrier concentration, so you have an extrinsic semiconductor. Majority carrier concentration is equal to the doping density. So equilibrium majority carrier concentration, whole concentration is 10 to the 17th. Now the excess carrier concentration is 10 to the 14th, three orders of magnitude smaller than the majority carrier concentration. So majority carrier concentration doesn't change. It changes only by 0.1%. But the minority carrier concentration, equilibrium minority carrier concentration is given by Ni squared from the law of mass action, if you recall. So N naught is given by Ni squared divided by P naught. And Ni squared, uh, Ni in, in silicon is of the order of 10 to the 10th. So uh, this quantity will give you something of the order of 10 to the third. On average, you have about a thousand electrons per cubic centimeters at equilibrium. Now you're creating a 10 to the 14th, many, many, many orders of magnitude greater. So you can see that a small change for majority carriers could mean really dramatic change in minority carriers and a lot of time, because of this reason, minority carrier dynamics determines the whole dynamics. Now let's do one more example here. Um, let's say that suddenly we have turned off the light. We have reached a steady state, and the steady state carrier concentration was 10 to the 14th, as shown in the previous slide. Uh, excess carrier concentration was, there is. Now suddenly, at t equals zero, you turn the light off. What happens then? Now, write down the continuity equation once again. Okay. Now you can see that you still don't have any electric field, so this term is zero, this term is zero. You still have no carrier concentration gradient. The uh, doping is still uniform, and the light was turned off, so, so there is nothing that causes non-uniform carrier concentration, so this thing is still zero. And the light was turned off. The, the thing that was generating carriers went away, so your generation rate is also zero. Now, however, your rate of change of carriers is no longer zero. You no longer have steady state. Um, the, the carriers are decaying, and you can imagine the carrier concentration gradually decrease and eventually approach the equilibrium value. So the continuity equation gets reduced to this simple equation, the rate of change in N, is equal to the to minus the recombination rate. And once again, write down your recombination rate as the excess carrier concentration divided by the lifetime. And the N, rate of change in N, is simply equal to the rate of change in delta N because N here is equal to N naught plus delta N. N naught equilibrium value doesn't change over time by definition. So the rate of change in N is equal to rate of change in excess carrier concentration. This is a very simple first order differential equation, will give you a simple exponential solution. What does this mean? This means that as you turn your light off, your excess carrier concentration, minority carrier concentration decays exponentially, and the time constant with which that excess carrier concentration decay, uh, decreases is given by the, car uh, the carrier lifetime.